So what I want to do now is, um, honestly, perhaps something we should have done early on. So this will sort of be uh, optional if you'd like to do this. But uh, let's let's uh, let's open up your web browser, and we'll do a, a Google search here. We'll search for this term, semantic HTML5. So HTML5 is the latest standard that we're using. And with it comes a variety of new tags that have a built-in meaning. Semantics, semantic HTML. These are tags that have a meaning. Uh, this div, these divs that we've been using throughout the project, the, the div tag does not have a built-in meaning. It's a generic container. It has no semantic meaning to it. And it works, but HTML5 was developed to address that issue about using the right tag for the right task tags with meaning. So if we search here semantic HTML5, hopefully your top result is HTML5 semantic elements from W3 schools. I've mentioned W3 schools several times before. There's a little chart there that I want to look at, a little schematic. So hopefully you see the result from w3schools.com. Click on that one, HTML5 semantic elements. And you should see then this um, uh, this little uh, little schematic where it divides up a web page with commonly used elements: uh, a header section, a nav section. Uh, like a sidebar and a side, a footer, section, and article. Uh, when HTML5 was being developed, I remember reading this in 2007, 2008, 2009, as the standard was coming together, there was research being done on creating semantic HTML tags, tags with meaning, and which would make sense because obviously everyone has an opinion about what tags should exist, what they should be named, and such. And through the research, it was found that many people were creating divs and then giving them an ID or a class with these common names, header, footer, nav, etc. So the W3C, the governing body of the web, said, OK, let's make a tag called header. And when you use the header tag, the meaning of it is that it's some sort of head content. If you use the footer tag, then it's some sort of footer content, like a copyright. A navigation bar, a nav bar, goes in the nav element. So this is, these are the examples of these semantic uh, HTML tags. Header, nav, section, article, etc. So all that we've been doing, let me write it like this, we've been writing um, div data role, header, and that's what's worked for us. But, and I, as I said, this is, this is optional if you want to do this, because we're going to need to kind of retrofit what we've already done. Because we can use um, header, header tags, to give this the meaning that it's a header. However, it's still going to need the data role of header because that's a, that's a jQuery mobile construct. So this is what I'm saying, that it might be more work than we want to do at this point. The project is almost practically done. Well, if we do this, it's not really going to improve anything visually, but it'll improve it in a technical level, it'll improve its, the semantics of it, the meaning of everything. 
and uh, modern web design is about doing using the right tool for the right or the right tag for the right task. Question. Does that then mean that you could you could have a footer tag and then a header tag and it would know to put the header at the top? And the no. The no. No, we should still put it in the order that we've been doing it. And I've sort of, uh, from what I've been reading, I've been, I've been reading uh, what is the correlation that we should use. What semantic HTML5 tag do we add the proper data role to? So I'm going to list those in a moment. But we should still keep the, the header as the first thing, and then the nav, and then the content, and then the footer. We should still keep that order. Great. Well, that's the example of what it looks like. This is actually more bytes. <laughs> That's true. That's what I'm saying. That uh, visually, it'll it should work the same. Um, the the interface should work the same. Everything should behave the same. It will create you know a few more bytes, and those bytes add up to a few kilobytes eventually. But again, this is more uh, correct in that you know you could uh, if you have a nail, you could use a screwdriver and drive it in eventually. But, but if you use later on, yes, off. because it's this is this is the more semantically correct, the more technically correct that we want to strive for. Yes? So, um, isn't it that also when web, uh, like the search engines are looking for you, it's, it's better to label it this way so they can know which content they should be displaying when they do like the little, when they return the little paragraph underneath? Yeah, this is also another another reason. If this is going to be a web project and therefore a search engine is going to be finding it, it's a good idea to mark up your document in this more appropriate manner. So there's several pros and cons for it and let's see, are there any explanation of pros here? Just how to use it. But um, there's more pros. The big con is that we're going to, you know, kind of redo what we did a little bit. That's why we're going to make a copy of our work and then do the change so that we still have the original one in case we want to use the original. But um, let me make a note of this, and then we'll, and then I'll show you this. So we we are going to use header, the header tag. We're going to use the nav tag. Basically, all the um, all the ones that are listed in the little schematic, except for aside. Maybe actually the panel could be an aside. But from what I was reading, I'll show you what um, what the correlation was. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That'll work. And I'll take only 10%. All right, so uh, let me write it here. The um, yes, I'm going to show you right now. So um, we're not going to use any more divs. They're going to be defined like this. So the very first div that we have of data role uh, page. Um, so we're going to write it like this: data role of uh, page. Now that one is going to be the section tags. Data roll of um, uh, this one's easy. Header is going to be header. I'm just going to write it this way. Data roll on the left and the HTML tag on the right. Um, so our data role of navbar is going to be nav. And then our data role of footer is going to be footer. Oh, I was missing one. Uh, content. Data role content, right? Oops. Undo is a powerful thing. So um, 
data roll of uh, content. Let me write it again. Uh, page is going to be section. Then we have the header, which is right. Data roll header is going to be header. Then we've got a nav bar. which is nav, and then content, that's the one I was forgetting. Uh, so data role content, that one is going to be article, and then we've got footer. So we're not going to be writing div, data role, footer. We are going to write the footer tag, but it's still going to need a data role of footer because the data role makes sense for jQuery mobile. If we just wrote footers, it would it would not look like a jQuery mobile site. We still need the data roles. Question, yes. Is it going to be weird that we're having over multiple spots? No. We do you mean like too many times? Yeah. So do you, do you like header and footer, you can use them more than once in, in a page? Mm -hmm. uh, because we're using uh, jQuery mobile, that one chunk of content has its header and its footer, it exists as its own page. Therefore, we can have another whole page, another whole section, that can have its own header and footer. So not necessarily can there only be a one header and a one footer, just like we use over and over, data roll page, data roll page, data roll content. We use that over and over too. But we only use the. Uh, I'm just. I was just making sure it was a like head and body where you can only use one per document. No. What we've been doing so far, we've been doing. We've been able to use everything over and over except IDs. So if we had one HTML document. But still, from what I've read, if we're separating this by sections, we should be okay. That's the whole concept of it. Because we've got section ID page 1, section ID page 2, we should be able to do more than one. Question. That is true, and I was curious about that. That's why when I was looking at examples about, uh, you know, upgrading our document to a semantically correct HTML5 document, there was some disagreement. But what I was seeing was that section seems to fit the bill. So there is no uh, semantic element of page itself. Maybe in HTML5.1. So also, I was wondering, do people books and people about developing? They would be separate things. HTML5 does not need at all to touch jQuery Mobile, but we're using jQuery Mobile as the end result of it being a mobile-friendly website and then eventually an app. Right. So as for the percentages and stuff, I, I don't know. Um, the way we've been doing it so far by using divs and then adding the data roles and it's been working, we could stay this. We could keep it as is here. And like I said, we're going to copy our documents so we have a, a backup of it. And then I'm going to move forward with this and I'm still sort of iffy on the whole retrofitting of it. Uh, retrofitting of it. That's why I'm going to make a copy of it and then read more. How about uh, Anna, should we try SI? Should we try what? SI. Aside, uh, yeah, I, maybe we should do that too. Our panel, um, our panel should be aside. Yeah, I, I thought about it, but I didn't write it down. So because the panel is related to content that is um, in in that area, so if now that we've added uh, panels, data role panel. We'll see what happens if we use that as aside, because yeah, aside is related to content that exists either in a section or article, like a sidebar, 
like you see this in magazine layouts that you're 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 reading some magazine and then there's a pull quote that would be a literal aside right there so a panel we'll see what happens if we do it with a side button uh, well I don't see an example of button here Uh, so let's uh, let's do this then. I'm going to go to Notepad here, and I'm going to close my index file. Make sure you saved it. I'm going to make a copy of it, and I'll show you a trick to do this. That's not um, confined to Notepad. So I'm going to close Notepad, and uh, and then go to your folder where your project is at. Uh, mobile website. So the, the index file, and I guess eventually the, the DIR file, we would have to do this, but we'll work on index at the moment. This index file, I want to work, I want to I retrofit this. And here's my trick. This works on Windows, uh, any version of Windows, I believe. If you want to make a copy of a document, you can do this. You can right-click and hold and drag. So I've right-clicked and I've held it and I dragged it to this empty spot, let it go. You get the pop-up that says copy. Obviously, there's many ways to do this, but here's one way that I find useful: that if you click and if you right-click and drag something, you get the menu before it actually executes. So I've selected copy. That index copy is going to be my backup. That's the one that I leave it as is. Everything seems to work. I haven't filled in my content and such, perhaps, but the whole structure works. And then this new index file. That's the one that I'm going to update because I'm not going to work on the copy because remember my index file up here is still going to test are you on a mobile are you on a desktop if you're on mobile send me to the index file inside of mobile website so if I started to update the index copy it would not point me to the latest version of the of the code the semantic code that I'm gonna write so in short to just make a copy of your index file and then let's get back to edit that index file And I think one of the best ways to do this, let's do it manually one time, and then we'll do a little bit of search and replace the next time. The next times. Uh, so go back to edit in Notepad. Starting on line 28. This is where uh, we've got our first example, data roll page. So that's line 28 and... 74, that's where the pair is at. So line 28, we're going to change that from a div data roll of page, a whole page, we've said that that is going to be a section. So we'll write section there. That needs its pair, that's why I said on line 74, slash section. So we haven't used the section tag before, but it's just like any other tag, opening and closing tags, opening and closing pairs. So line 74, slash section. line 29, and then its pair is on 53. That is our data roll of header. And we have, a, we have a new tag for that, header. So change that div to header. And then also on line 53, slash header. So 29 and 53, slash header. Back to the top. Data roll of nav bar. That's line 33. And 52. So line 33, instead of it being a div, a generic HTML construct, 
we will mark this as nav, N-A-V. And its pair is on line 52 slash nav. All right, back to the top. What's next is div data role of content on 54. From 54 to 68, the actual content of, uh, of our page is article. Lines 54 and 68. So there's no input in the collapsible. Collapsible. I'd have to look that up. Um, it could be another, technically, it possibly could be another article, but I'm not going to change it just yet. Not every div does have a one-to-one -one correspondence with some new semantic HTML5. And then lastly, we've got a footer on this, uh, on this section. And so that's lines 69 to 73. And that one is footer slash footer. So notice I did it all in pairs because they all ended in a slash div. And if I just changed the very first half of the pair, then suddenly I'm going to see all these divs at the end and I'm going to forget what's the pair. That's why I also wrote it down. Um, and perhaps find and replace will help us, but now that I think about it, probably not because we can't really target the closing slash div. But uh, anyway, uh, that's what I've changed so far. I'm going to save it and run it, and I it should behave the same as before. I'm looking at my... I've only done this to my home screen, so my home screen seems to be okay, and then I go to the other pages and they're fine. Go back to home and it's fine. So again, visually nothing should have changed, but behind the scenes, under the hood, it's more correct. It's, uh, it's using the latest constructs, the latest tags in HTML, semantic tags, that have meaning. So if this were a web uh, app, search engines would, would look at it, analyze it, parse it, and, uh, and, and add you to the index. Uh, and uh, this is more forward thinking. Question? So this would still work if you just changed them all to footers. Yeah, but again, you want you want to use the right tool for the right task. Right. Yeah, we it could work just like we've used div over and over. Exactly. This makes does make it to me. It does make it easier to read when you're searching for something and you're browsing yeah. through all these sections. That's seeing, another. Seeing a slash div doesn't really tell you what's going to end up. Exactly. There's another. It's another big pro there. Yeah. All right. So again, um, 
I'm going to put my code at the end of the day uh, for you to look at it, but uh, I'm going to do the same thing for the other pages. Um, remember, we've got uh, every div data role of page is a section. So now I'm going to do line 76. Seventy-six to that's a big one. Seventy-six to one forty-six. So section data roll page art, and then the header section the div that goes from seventy-seven. To 102, and that is um, header. Data roll of nav bar line 81. is just nav slash nav. The content begins on 103 and it ends on 140, and that one is an article. Okay. Yes? I guess the real proof of this uh, will be when we try to validate this. If we're using an HTML5 validator. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because that'll tell us if we missed yesterday. The exactly. Get away with it. Exactly, because we've got we've got a we've got the section inside of a, you know, as our schematic showed us, we've got section in below the nav, but that we'll see what happens when we validate. Uh, let's see, article content and the stuff inside of there. That's fine. And then I'm going to go to uh, the footer. So that's footer on one line 41, slash footer on 145. Oh, and, I, and this is where we had the, this is where the, we had the panel. So panel, I'm going to see about using a side with it. The panel is at seventy-seven. Oops, I think I might have been working in the wrong document. Yes, today's not September 30th. But anyway, everything that I said still makes sense. It's just that I'm working in the wrong file. That's why that's a good thing I made that copy so I can take it back.
Okay, there we go. I just caught up. Sorry about that. Uh, data roll panel. Did anyone try it? Did it work? If you set your aside. I'm going to try that right now. Okay, line 77. Yes. Um, thank you for that, Randall. So div of data roll panel, I'm going to set that to aside. Well, I added a side to that in data roll panel, and it seems to have worked. And semantically, it makes sense to me that this is an aside for this content. That was line 77 to 94. And so eventually when you get to the screens that had our basic computer con classes and intermediate computer classes, same thing. They're going to have data roles of page and header and content, and then you add the appropriate new HTML5 tag. All right, so how many of you have ventured to do this since it was optional? Okay, good. Uh, I'm gonna we're gonna take a short break and then I'm gonna put this code in the in the folder again. So now you have this version of my of my code. So uh, it's 8.05, let's take a 10-minute break and then we'll be back.